Welcome back to another episode, this time the first episode of Cricket Across America, brought to you by Big Innings. I'm Owen Patel, here with Nate Hayes. And Nate, no more minor league, but we're still on MLC Network, and we're still talking about all things cricket, all things USA. We've got USA games coming up. we got a lot of interesting things to talk about. We're going to wrap up minor league season as well. Really looking forward to it. Yeah, but before we get into cricket talk, guys, this is not planned, all right? We don't have a wardrobe person. This is a fall edition, and we both just happen to wear similar style clothes. They, this is like a third week in a row we've just been doing this. Yeah, we've matched up pretty decently, I think. We got the maroon theme going this time. Feels like we might be spending too much time together. I think so. I think, well, part of <laughs> and this is we just were so happy to get back. Well, Texas was hot. Ah, there you we're go. We're ready for fall. We, we're, we're ready for English conditions. We're ready. Yeah, as soon as it, we get the slightest amount of coolness here, it's like, yeah, try, straight into fall clothes. Get get the red ball out. Get, get the sweater vest out. That's right. And let it rip. Let it swing around and while the ball is swinging let's get our eye in with some early news and some snippets about usa cricket and cricket in the usa i want to start with aaron jones because he wasn't there for the minor league final he in fact did play on that final day but not for minor league cricket he was down in the cpl scoring a game-winning knock for the st lucia kings in the cpl he was spectacular in that game and now that's gotten him a spot back into the t20i side if there's a big crowd, Aaron Jones seems to put his hand up, and yeah. he plays huge. He does. So I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what size crowds we have down in Texas for the Nepal T20i series, because he does tend to perform in the big moments in front of a big, raucous crowd. Yeah, no, I'm excited. Last time we saw him at Grand Prairie would have been the World Cup as well, so the 33 against Pakistan, and then the 95 he scored against Canada, not out, so now he'll get out there against... Uh, Nepal side, and I'm excited about that, T that T20 side. We'll talk about that USA-Nepal T20 stuff in a little bit here, but we just want to catch you up on a couple other nuggets of news that happened around the country, starting next with Andres Chaus, who will appear in the Nepal Premier League as it kicks off in yet another edition. He was signed for the Pokhara Avengers. So excited to see Andres Chaus. He's such a good bat, and I think him in every T20 competition is the best thing for everybody. Oh, it's great. It's good for the national team. He's been on a great run, yeah. uh, both internationally and in, in leagues. He's, he's, you know, a lot of people consider him the best bat in the USA, and I, I think that's probably accurate. So, yeah, anything he can get a part of is going to make that product better. It's going to make him better. And this, this series gives the Nepal fans some, uh, a way to get used to him, a, a way to get to know him a little bit for that series. I think he could make himself a celebrity there a little. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> There's... A name that's not associated with USA Cricket anymore, but always a member of that USA Cricket Society. Bubudu Dasanayaka, he is the coach of the Janakpur Bolts. I'm excited to see Coach Bubudu out there with the side yet again. Oh yeah, Bubudu's got a, you know, a special place in the heart of Nepal cricket fans for sure, as he does here with USA Cricket. I feel like anywhere he goes, whether that's Canada, Nepal, here, I mean, he just, he turns cultures around. He wins, yeah, he and does. I think that's a big part of it. Yeah, he, he's just an exciting guy to be around and excited to see what he does in that Nepal Premier League. Speaking of Premier Leagues, minor league cricket happened, and then right after that we saw the NCL, the National Cricket League, come about, and we saw some domestics have a really good performance. That was in Texas as well. Garthik Getapoli won player of the tournament, and then we also saw Matthew Comrie, part of the winning side for the NCL. How cool is that? Yeah, it's great. They're both good young spinners in the USA. Karthik Getapoli, I said on uh, Instagram, I said he's been one of the top spinners in the USA for three years. That's yeah. not an exaggeration. No, it's not. He's, we just happen to have a lot of good spinners in his role, <laughs> but he's been amongst the very the very best, and right. so I'm not at all surprised. No, not at all surprised. And it was really cool to see that as well. You know, that tournament kind of just snuck up on you and then heard some really good things about it from a lot of people and, you know, had a lot of good American voices in terms of the umpires. We were seeing guys like Jermaine Lindo, Rashane Samuels was there. Brian K went and do a little visit and talk to those guys, and then... Um, you know, seeing the domestics continue to perform at a high level is really cool. Absolutely, and good, good job, KG. Good job, KG. Well, that is getting our eye in. And now that we're set, we're seeing the ball well, let's get on to some more expansive strokes, some more expansive topics. Well, we'll move on now to the USA team, but plenty of USA teams to talk about, not just the one men's team that you might be thinking of. We've got the women that we want to start out with because they're headed over to Zimbabwe. They'll play their first ODI tomorrow. Nate, we kind of touched on this last week with Aditi Chudasma taking over as the captain for Sindushri Harsha, who's been the captain for you know, most of these young girls' career. 
What are you looking forward to? What are you excited about seeing down in Zimbabwe from our women? Well, I, I think that it's going to be a great test for them. Overseas conditions, a uh, good, uh, good, good uh, talent for them to play against. They haven't you know, played a ton of cricket in the last year. Um, I'm, I'm excited to see how uh, Aditi does with this yeah. team in the leadership role. Uh, obviously, Sindhu's still in the squad, uh, hopefully there to support her. Um, but, yeah, I would like to see how, how well they do throughout the duration. And, you know, we've seen it with the men a lot. Some, sometimes they'll start with a series really well and they'll lose the last game or vice versa. And I, I want to see how they evolve. I hope they get better every single time. Yeah, I agree. It's a new format for them. They play ODI cricket before, but they don't play a lot of ODI cricket at home. And I saw in St. Louis, they played a test match, quote unquote, with whites and red ball. So that's an exciting thing for them to continue to play longer format, see how they could they, they develop on that role. Because I think for them, batting wise, it probably suits them a little bit better. Bowling wise, it could be a little bit different having to bowl in a longer spell. Speaking of bowlers, I'm interested to see Gideka Gonali, of course, from our area, live, presides in our area of the world. Interested to see how she continues to develop. She's one of those premier young you know, cricketers here that was really identified really young. Captain the under-19 team. And I just want to see her take a bigger role in the side. Really as the premier pacer, a bat that is a trusted all-rounder. She can truly be a fast-bowling all-rounder for our side. Oh, 100%. And I think one of the big things we're going to see, one of the questions we're going to have answered is, how many overs can she give us in, in a 50-overs in game? Yeah. Uh, we see oftentimes when she's captain, she hasn't given herself the full quota for whatever reasons. Uh, but this, I think they're going to need good overs from her and a lot of them. Yeah, so I'm, like you said, I'm excited to see what role she continues to play. This should think I want to see her with the bat to continue. A lot of these women on this team are so good. And I'm excited to see the young team, as you mentioned, grow, right? They're playing ODI cricket against a really talented side. They'll get a real opportunity to get out there, experience what it's like to play ODI cricket. And you're never going to get worse from playing more cricket. You're yeah. always going to move in the right direction. As long as it's good cricket. Yeah. And it's definitely good cricket. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, good luck out there to the women. They're playing side by side with the men at times. So keep flipping the channels back and forth. But we'll definitely be following that because, again, the game of cricket is only going to be as big here as a women's game gets. Right? And yeah. One, you want to support these women because they're just amazing people, amazing cricketers. But two, you want to see the game of cricket grow. And the women's sector of the game is vastly important. They're, they're the key to the growth of cricket in the U.S. 100%. Well, there you go. There's the USA women taking on Zimbabwe in the first ODI tomorrow on the 17th of October. Moving on now to a USA side. Maybe not the men's team, but one level below that, the USA A squad. We have a USA A squad. Nate, me and you have talked about why don't we have a USA A team yet? Why don't we have, you know, one of these USA emerging teams or anything of that nature? Well, we have one now with Team USA, the USA A team. I'll read you the squad as it goes out here. This is for the warm-up matches between Scotland and Nepal. So they haven't played anything yet. They're an ODI warm-up team. Rahul Jaliwala makes his mark as a captain. Sushant Mandani gets back into USA colors. Nitish Kumar, Sanjay Krishnamurti, Skandal Rohit Sharma, Utkar Srivastava, Kwame Patton Jr., Vatso Vagela, Ali Sheikh, Zia Shazad, Ali Sheikh Badarkar, Ayan Desai, and Aran Nadkarni. So, an exciting little passage there. A lot of young cricket, a youth movement there. What do you like about this team? What surprises you? What would you like? Who would you have liked to have seen in this side? Well, we've we've said we've long said that we, we want to see a USA A team and we want to see an emerging team. This is kind of a combination. Sure. The, they've gone really young with with most of the team, but some of these young guys have already had spells in the USA team, like Ali Sheikh and Vatsal Gela, even uh, Rahul Jarawala. Yep. I think that. I'm excited to see this team. I'm incredibly uh, excited to see this team. Uh, the one thing that I that I was surprised not to see after minor league is is no no uh, Garg in the team. Yeah, I, like you mentioned, the youth movement. You just felt Arya Garg is a guy you have to throw in there because of how explosive he is. The left arm seam yeah. had a great minor league. He's made waves. You felt he had to be in there. They do have their left arm seam of I on the side and are not Garney. So plenty of left armers, but you just felt Garg was going to be part of that uh, and. I was pleasantly surprised maybe to see the younger movement. I thought, you know, the A team typically for most countries tends to be your next 11, yeah. right? Maybe you throw a couple of bones to some young players you just want to gain experience to, but it tends to be the guys on the fringe. Next up. Next up. And so, yeah. you know, I was thinking of maybe a Stephen Wigg 
guests are on here, and Obis Panars on this, and Lahiru Malanta, Nomen Anwar. Sure. Um, you know, those kind of individuals, do they get on the list? It seems that they're saying, okay, we're using this A team as really the under 19's second team almost. Yeah, and, and I understand that you, you can't have both things right now. Right. So this is steps. We've got to take yep. steps. And that is the very difficult time for cricketers in the USA is the college age. Yeah. A lot of guys fall off, fall off at that point. They, you know, minor leagues bridge the gap a lot. This, this will help those players who, who, who the gap was bridged for right. continue to play elite cricket and to play at, at the near international level, which is what we need. We need an A, a squad. So, um, yeah, I think it's fantastic. Uh, Ugarkar, I'm a little surprised. Yeah, Rushul Ugarkar not in the team. Like, so there's there's guys you would have thought would have gotten there, right? You mentioned Rushul Ugarkar. I would have thought about, you know, Arya Garg, as you mentioned. Do you know? Could you have seen some of these guys thrown? Absolutely. Rishi Ramesh is another name you throw around. True. So plenty of guys that you could have thrown in here. Skanda's in the squad. Yeah, I was about to say you're <laughs> having that Skanda Rohit Sharma's in the squad. After so, the minor league he had. Exactly. Yeah. Speaking of the minor league that these guys are having. We couldn't just stop talking about minor league cricket. Guys, we are suckers for minor league cricket. We love it. And we had to give you a little bit of a, of a bow on top of what was an excellent season. We want to give you our minor league division teams of the year. So this is for every division. We've picked 12 individuals. We picked an 11 and a 12th man. And again, this is based on your stats of this particular season, the role you played. And again, some of the eye tests as well. So it's not about what's the, who's the biggest name, right? Just because Sarbjit Lunda is one of the highest wicket takers in minor league history doesn't mean he's going to automatically fill into the list. Sure. It's how does your stats this season compare to the stats of your counterparts in your division and how exclusive was the role that you played? Right, and we also wanted to build these teams as if they were real teams. Yes. So if the top six guys were uh, taking wickets were, le were left arm orthodox spinners, we didn't have left so, six six no, of them in the team. No. We again, we 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 need we, fast bowlers. We talked about <laughs> it in the context of what was still reasonable, right? We weren't going to yeah. pick the third fast bowler if there is a margin of twenty wickets. You know, right. that wasn't going to be a thing that happened. But we try to do it in a way that it would you would see in a team built similar to this if you were building an actual team for right. any given weekend. Yeah. All right. Well, like we did all minor league show, let's start with the South, Nate. Sure. And this might have been the toughest division for us just because there was a lot of cancels of games. The pitches were always a question. The most amount of games we saw were in Atlanta, and those pitches weren't always conducive to pace bowling. So it was hard to find pacers on this. Yeah, you get a lot of rain this, <laughs> this time of year. You know, you, you get the, uh, about 110 thunderstorms in, in the summer in yeah. the south. And uh, that affected a lot of cricket. It did. Well, let's get into this team here. For the south, our openers. They're both from the Atlanta Fire. It's Steven Taylor and Rajdeep Darbar. Steven Taylor, of course, with the 200s. Rajdeep Darbar was part of the team all season long. Missed one game early, but picked up the runs in the back end of things. That one down Prasad Murthy for the Atlanta Lightning. Stats doesn't blow you away, but what he did at the one down spot, spark plug, consistent runs, and it was hard to score consistent runs on those Atlanta services. Then at number four, Uksh the Vey comes in. Bozlet of Ospin was really good at three and four for the fire. A young cricketer as well, so important to us to get a little bit of the youth in there when we could. He fits in at the number four. At number five, our wicket keeper, it's Ahad Malik. No real surprises there. The Baltimore Royals were so good, they deserved a member on this squad. And Ahad Malik didn't get too many opportunities to bat, but he's so good when he does. Speaking of opportunities to bat from the Baltimore Royals, Obis Panar fits in at number six in his preferred batting spot. This is where he tends to bat. He opened a lot this season after Jessica Mahotra got injured, but he scored enough runs before he left to be a part of this 11. Moving into Christopher Barnwell, this is where the pace kind of made the impact. Barnwell was amongst the wickets with the pace, and with the bat, wasn't his usual explosive self, but still was able to find runs. Sunny Patel is the captain of this team as a leg spinner and had some really important late innings in matches. Following him, another seamer, Zaid Alam, who comes in, and you'd have to say one of the best seamers around in the South. Amila Ponzo fills out as the left arm spinner, and then Fani Samadhi, your left arm seamer, to end that Southern 11. What do you reckon with the 12th man on that team as Soab Tai, an off spinner who opens the batting? Yeah, I think that's a really good team. Like you said, we didn't get many games in the South. Unfortunately, nobody from Florida, from the Florida teams. 
made the squad. You get a lot of rainouts in Florida. Yeah. Uh, but I think the team's really good. Uh, I, I mean, all of these teams are really good. I, I like that there's some new names that we get to talk about this season. Um, but, yeah, Sonny Patel as the captain, is, I think that's a great choice. The surprise to me is there's only two Baltimore Royals. Yeah. I, I think the problem with Baltimore, you go look at their stats, is they bat so deep and they bowl so deep. The problem there is that a lot of games got rained out for them. But also, that because they were so loaded up top with the bat, Obis Panar played most of the innings. And then once Obis left, Gurunjit Singh played most of the inning. And then they didn't have a game after that. So you get three or four games where you don't have guys touch the bat. Like, Shadar Lumba doesn't touch the bat for the, for the most of, of the season until the playoffs. You're sitting there thinking, oh, he's got to be in the team. But the stats of the regular season wouldn't have justified it. But you know they're good enough to be on this side. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think that it, it's a difficult division. Honestly, this was the hardest division. It, it, was, it was very tough. It, again, it just came down to rain, to wickets, to conditions. Um, this is the 11 that we got. If you guys have any changes you would like to see made, if you think you have a completely another 11, go shoot us that in the comment section after you click that subscribe button as well. Nate. You've covered the East all year long. Let me know what your 11 here is for this East division. Well, it gets started off with the Philadelphians uh, with Christopher Van Tull, who was a wicked keeper. He's a wicked keeper. He scored 179 runs in eight innings. Now, in the, in the East, you don't get as many runs scored, so you're not going to have huge numbers. But Van Tull looked really, really good to me, and, and, and I think he fits that wicked keeper spot really, really well. I think we're going to see a lot of great stuff from him. Then you got Chandrapal Hemraj uh, from the Cavaliers, 191 runs. Now, a lot of those runs were scored in his one century, <laughs> but he st kept up a 150 strike rate all season. He's, he's a class player. Ryan Scott from Philadelphia is also one of the Philadelphia openers. Now, we have him batting number three in, in, a, in our team here, 160 runs. It's a down year for Ryan Scott, but his strike rate was still high at 142.86. His He had a, you know, he gave you quick runs in the power play like Ryan Scott does. Alex Algu, New York City Titans, 151 runs in six innings. He looks really, really good. He's got a great long reach to get to. When the spinners try to bowl away from him, he, you know, he can really absolutely launch the ball. After that, we've got Gajanan Singh. Don't need to say much about him. He's an absolute legend in cricket in the USA. He had 250s. He takes wickets as well. Bhaskar Yadram for Philadelphia. He was uh, top in runs uh, in the league, near the top in wickets. He was just consistently a massive performer for the Philadelphians. Jonathan Fu comes in next. For Philly as well, for fourth in wickets, he just passed to a thousand runs in minor league career. He, you know, Jonathan Fu every single year produces. <laughs> Mario Laban, NYC Titans, 18 wickets, the most in the East. He was tremendous. Najaf Shah coming up next. He's my captain for the team. Uh, Najaf Shah, we've seen we've seen seen his guts this season playing with injury in the Super Eights and still knocking people over. The guy, not only does he take wickets, he takes a lot bold, which is yeah. fun to watch. Then you got uh, Norman Iftikhar, New England Eagles. He took 15 wickets. Viraj Desai from the Cavaliers. We've named a lot of Cavaliers, a lot of Philadelphians, but Viraj Desai, phenomenal season. Oh, 15 oh, wickets at a 4.75 economy. And then my 12th man is Abdul Jabbar, just to get another uh, uh, spinner in the equation. Uh, he had 11 wickets this season. He was very, very good for the Philadelphians. No, it's a great team there, Nate. I think to see Najib Shah and the heart right next to each other, both captain their sides, both tremendous with the ball. I know leaving out a you know, guy like Arya Garg is probably hard, burn up at the podium. That Yorkers team might have not gotten anyone into this, but they're all on the fringe. That's exciting for them. Yeah. But I look at this team, and I look at the East as a whole, and you just say the batting numbers, yes, maybe down from you know, two years ago. But you're seeing Jinder Hemraj striking at 150. You're seeing Ryan Scott able to have a high strike rate. You're seeing Alex Algu with a high strike rate. Gajan Singh, Bhaskar Yadram. And you're thinking, okay, the wickets are getting better and the talent is getting better there as well. Yeah, it's true. And we, we've seen players who have put a good strike rate up in the East get drafted into Major League yeah. Cricket because they're able to do that on difficult surfaces. And, and, you know, they just, it doesn't affect them. Yeah. So when you see it, players of this class get unaffected by 
slightly more difficult week. It's, it's, it's a sign of their class. 100%. And now I think Major League teams are noticing more and more the differences between players in the South versus players in the East or the Central or the which West. Which is very important. Which is, which is important. You're seeing scouts go over there. So even if they didn't know about it before, the moment you step there, you know and you see it with your eyes, okay, it's a little bit different. That's maybe right. a Grand Prairie like it is, right? So right. Um, that's exciting to see. Great team that. Abdul Jabbar, great 12th man choice as well. I know there was a couple guys that you wanted to get on this list though. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot. I mean, I could go on for a long time <laughs> about, about the players that I think could be on this list in any given yeah. season. But uh, I'm happy with the team. No, 100%. All right, there's the East. Again, if you have any objections to Nate's team there, put it down in the comments. Or if you like it, you can put that down in the comments as well. Moving now to the Central, which is the most stacked team. You'd have to just say, based on what we're going to read you, you bat to like, I, th I think you bat all the way down because even the 11th guy was able to hit the ball around. So you bat all the way, you got probably three of the best seamers in the country, and then you have two all-rounders that seam the ball as well. Let's get into it. I'll let me stop talking about it and just let's just get right into it. Noman Anwar leads us off with the bat for the St. Louis Americans, made the move from Dallas, so effective at the top of the order, had to be consistently in the 40s. Lahita Malanta gets down to Houston and gets in to this team as the wicket keeper. The wicket keeper position was tough. I didn't think there was a keeper that made a big enough impact straight throughout the year. Lahita, though, opening the batting, did what he does best, consistent through the power play. Might get out right after that, but gives you a platform to build your innings. Faraz Ali sits there at number three. How good was he for the Kingsmen all year? Coupled with Saad Ali for the Kingsmen, obviously the MVP of the entire league, followed by Thajinder Singh at five. How about that for a top five? But it gets Ridiculous. even better. Hamad Azam comes in as the captain, comes to bat at six. Shubham Ranjane comes to bat at seven for the Exploria Giants. Ujwal Vinakota, who was top three in wickets and had a strike rate above 200, comes in at eight. Usman Rafiq as the spinner of this side. He's into the team and into the team for good reason. Needed that spin option, and he was very good for the Hurricanes. Bats as well. Sankrit Batula, again, top three in wickets, strikes above 200. And then Mohamed Ilyas, who his stats, I think he was the third of the wicket taker bunch. But the way he bowled and the most critical overs, he was economical, bowled at the top, bowled at the end, and he was just phenomenal. That is your central team with the 12th man of Awezia, who was almost our opener on this side, had Awezia been able to keep wicket. Yeah, this is a <laughs> right. This, <laughs> this is an amazing team. Now, first of all, this team looks like it would do incredibly well at Grand Prairie, oh, which yeah. I think I think obviously it's such a Grand Prairie is such a big part of cricket in the USA right now. It's a great idea to build a team for that reason. This team looks like they would be very very good at, at Grand Prairie. Yeah, I agree with you there. They'd be great at Grand Prairie, and I feel like they'd be great anywhere. I mean, that team yeah. is phenomenal. Uh, and again, there's players we've missed. Zayed Sakil had a great comeback year. We didn't put like a guy of Esan Adil's class, or Zeal Huck's class, isn't on the list. Calvin Savage. Calvin Savage. Justin Dill was great this season. Yeah. Plenty of guys. And it, this was hard to choose just from a sheer number of players' perspective. Like, had Harmeet Singh finished the year, he probably would have finished on this team. Josh Trump's not on the team. Saif Madar had a good year. But this was a tough team to put together. Yeah, as hard as the South was because of lack of games. This yeah. was hard because of so many so many performers. Absolutely. Well, one last division. Let's head over to the West. All right, over in the West, we got Reuben Clinton, very close to winning the MVP in the in the West in general. 352 runs he, he led the West. In. He was almost the MVP of the West. Huge answer for Seattle at the top of the order. Anthony Bramble for Silicon Valley Strikers is the wicket keeper, and he's also opening the batting along with Reuben Clinton. He's always been dominant everywhere he's gone in minor league cricket. His career is 1,155 runs at a strike rate of 149. He's played his whole career in the East or the West, which are two difficult places to bat. Uh, he scored a century this year, his first in minor league cricket. Sujith Gowda, East Bay Blazers. He moved back to the East Bay Blazers and picked up where he left off. Yeah. He was tremendous uh, throughout the season. He's moved into first place. In, in minor league cricket for runs for their for his career. Skanda Rohit Sharma up next, and we celebrated his inclusion in the USA A team. Uh, 43 average, 350s. He was fourth in runs at 261. Sanjay Krishnamurthy, East Bay, East Bay Blazers. He's the captain and MVP of the of the West. I don't need to say much about him. He was great in the in the Super Eights. He was great throughout the season. Suj Sujith Nayak, my goodness. He, once again, great in the regular season, 242 runs, yeah. and tremendous in the Super 8, 183 runs. He was just 
he, he, he was incredible. Pranay Suri, one of the best uh, domestic all-rounders in the, in the U USA in minor league cricket. He's had a tremendous career. He took five wickets. He had a high score of 85, and he struck at 162. Great career so far from him. Since he Siegerts with Seattle, what we thought that Seattle's fast bowling would suffer sure. with the with the loss of uh, of Shadley Van Schalkwijk uh, to the USA team for for a period. However, since he Siegerts was was just tremendous. Eleven wickets in just over nineteen point four overs. Abhishek Paradkar, East Bay Blazers. Once again, he didn't get the full season because he was with USA, but he performed well enough to be on this squad. 11 wickets, and he can go big at the end, which he has done this season in minor league cricket. Abijay, Abijay Mansing from Seattle, 13 wickets. He's, he was an excellent uh, performer for, for Seattle with the ball. Rashil Ugarkar, we've mentioned him a lot <laughs> yeah. this season. He had to be on this team. He led the West in wickets uh, for East Bay Blazers. Cody Chetty is my 12th man from the LA Lashings. He scored 239 runs at a 134 strike rate. We got, we got to see a little bit more from Cody Chetty in terms of his freedom to play. Uh, he, he, was in, he had to play at a higher strike rate this season uh, for his team. I think I can see him getting back in an MLC squad. Yeah, 100%. I like that team right there. Sanjay Krishnamurti, obviously, as the captain. Um, you know, no Carmine LaRue in the team. That's something you're surprised about almost. But, again, the fast bowling in the West was such a staple. So you mentioned Cincy Seegers, Ben Skulkvik was great when he returned. And then on East Bay itself, Abhishek Bhattagar and Uchila Garkar were great. The fast bowling out in the West was really good this season, I thought, compared to a lot of the other years. Well, you have guys like Guy and Fernando who didn't make this, yeah. squ this squad who could have easily. Uh, but I think, um, you know, outside of the Central, I think the fast bowling was the best in the, uh, the, the West was the next best division. Yeah. Well, it was good. Well, Nate, we didn't talk about this question, but I'm going to ask it to you anyway. Of the four teams, they all play each other. Who do you got? Central. <laughs> <laughs> Without hesitation, he says Central. Do you guys agree with Nate Hayes? Would the Central team of the year beat every other division team of the year? Or would someone else get it? Let us know down below. I want to know because I think I agree with you, Nate, but I couldn't be persuaded to say the West could beat anybody. Well, they could. I think on you know, any of these teams on their day could beat any of the other teams. The thing is, the Central. We've talked about USA have USA having an A team now. Yeah. The Central needs an A team. It yeah. Like. <laughs> it feels that way. But there's your minor league recap. There's kind of our last bit of minor league talk for the year. That's kind of crazy to think about, but there's always next. We'll find a way. We'll find a way to bring it back up. You never know with us. But what you do know is that the USA are taking on the Nepal starting tomorrow on the 17th. I'll be down there. Nate, I know you'll be watching. And this series is going to be phenomenal. Our very old Bobber Baig is going to be down there as well. And guess who else? Andrew and Letter. You got it. <laughs> you got it. Andrew Letter, he's been promoting it already yeah, to yeah. his significant Nepali fan base. You saw that video that he posted? Loved the, it. With the, you know, juggling the balls. Who's Literally. coming with me? Yeah, it's awesome. It's terrific. Uh, so so he, he'll be there. It's going to bring a crowd, I think. Uh, the Dallas area has the largest uh, collection of Nepali uh, origin expats in the USA. So I, I think we're going to see a big... I, I challenge USA fans to go out and try <laughs> to match that crowd. If USA can match the Nepal crowd, I think we're in for a great day. I remember Dave Agnew telling us when we were down there just a couple weeks ago that the Nepal crowd was easily bigger, the, the biggest crowd that he saw over there. And it was just like littered with Nepal fans everywhere. So I'm excited to experience that firsthand. I remember when they had the League Two down in Musa in 2022, the games with fans, Nepal Nepal games. And it was awesome to see that. So yeah, excited sure. to see what happens in Grand Prairie. But on the field, this USA team has a couple of new faces or faces back into it. Aaron Jones, he comes in for Smith Patel. Ali Khan comes in for Ion Desai as well, and Utkar Shivasava maintains his spot in the team. What do you make of that 11 name? Well, or it's interesting. Squad? It's interesting. Uh, it's an interesting squad. It is interesting to see Ut Utkarsh in this team. I, I think Utkarsh, even with the USA U19 team, he never got to really bat in his preferred position. Sure. So uh, we saw already when he's appeared for USA, senior men's team, he hasn't got to bat in his preferred position. But you know what? Uh, the adaptations that he'll have to make from this will only make him better. Yep. Uh, but yeah, Yasser Muhammad in the team, I really like that. Um, uh, yeah, and Aaron Jones coming off of what he's just <laughs> done. I, I, I think it, it, it'll be fun to see if he can keep that, keep that up in front of a crowd, because we know he loves to play in front of a crowd. 
Now, the, the, the thing for me that's, that's worth talking about the most, Steven Taylor's not in this side. Yeah. And we've talked already about, about that. He wasn't in the last team uh, that, just, that just returned. But Steven Taylor's the leading run scorer for USA in T20 history. He's got great career numbers. In 2022, he had a 58 average in, in T20 Jeez. at a 159 strike rate. Now, we didn't have any T20 eyes in 2023. Yeah. He didn't have a great 2023 in MLC. Yeah. Now, his, t- his 2024 USA T20s, he's played 11. He's averaged 22.54, but the, 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 the concerning part is this 117 strike rate. Right. Now, so he got removed from the team, and that allowed him to go to minor league. Uh, and what did he do in minor league? Scored two hundreds and <laughs> in his it, last two innings. In his last two innings, and he he was phenomenal. He was phenomenal. And to your point, having having some of those twenty twenty three game matches would have done him so much good. Like having matches in twenty twenty four prior to the World Cup for Shine Jung Gear would have done him so much good. Coming off a really good year, it felt like we've kind of left them off the hook. The one thing for me why Steven wouldn't get back into the squad immediately after the two hundreds. It's just because that top order is playing so well right now. So good. Andres Klaus is batting out of his mind. Saite Jamukamala is showing that he's going to be a force to be reckoned with for years to come. And Monaco tell your captain, he's batting phenomenally well. And that's your top three. Okay, Aaron Jones comes back. Steven Taylor comes back. Who would you would rather have come at four? Steven Taylor has kind of shown through his career that he is a preferred opener and does his best batting at up top of the order. So I think you, you bring back Aaron Jones to bat in the middle. You leave the top order the way it is. And if you end up needing somebody, you probably can pull Steven in there. But I, I think Steven misses out just because of how good the form is from that top order. You, you can't argue with the team that's, that's put out there as far as the top order batting. Yeah. I, I totally agree. They're, they're in great form. Who do you take out? That's yeah. the big question. The, the question for me is... Um, you know, you don't, we don't have Corey Anderson in the squad. Right. Uh, we don't have Shadley in the squad, who gives you a left-handed, right. you know, bat. So, so I think that's the big, the bigger question to me for um, for this is there's there's not many lefty yeah. lefty bats. You Just have Harmi uh, uh, Singh later on. Right. And then you, you if, if if he plays, you got Yasser. Right. But aside from that, there's there's a you know, and I think against a team like Nepal, you might want to have that option. However. I get, I get it. Once he's out and the team is doing as well as right. they're doing, no need to force. Yeah, the the path back for Steven right now. Okay, so he went, he came back and he did two, he scored two centuries. That's terrific. He's done his job. Right. Uh, that's what he's supposed to do. Now the second part of that is someone has to do bad. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's that's the cruelty of sport, right? You can come back, you can do what you need to do, but if the guy there is playing well, they're not going to want to move off of that, and that's just this predicament Steven Taylor's in at the moment. Speaking of these two teams as a whole, though, there are two teams coming off two different phases. The USA are coming off a real high. They're three and two in their last five T20s, and really since that Netherlands tour, they've been on a tear both in ODI and in T20 cricket. While Nepal, they struggled in that Canada Tri Series. Their only two wins came against Oman, lost two to Canada, and before that, they had only played the World Cup since, and they had lost their last game to Bangladesh. So it's two teams coming from two different places right now. We have seen with Nepal in the past. We've seen Nepal when they need to uh, win and put together an incredible streak. Yeah. I've never seen anything like what they did in the, at, the, at the tail the last 12 oh. games of the of the Cricket World Cup League Two Unbelievable. last cycle into the qualifier as well. It was amazing what they did. I've never seen that before at the at, at, in ODI cricket. Yeah, and so I you have to be you have to keep that in mind with Nepal. Now they're definitely a better team at home. Yeah. But uh, they did play here already in the World Cup at Grand Prairie. And I think those memories that will be there. The fans will be there sure. for them for sure. And so I, I don't, you can't take them easy at all. Uh, uh, and I don't think USA is, is the type of team right now that's taking anyone easy. No, it's going to be a good matchup. I think Gunnar KC is going to be really effective on that wicket. We saw the hit the green grass, and we know what he can do, how destructive he can be. I'm really excited for this matchup. Rohit Baldo is batting well. I want to see Gushan Ja up close. My God, was he smacking the ball around in Canada? Oh. And I think at Grand Prairie, I think he's going to have an absolute field day if you guys in there in a pinch hitting role. And then with the ball, he's so good as well. Yeah, and, and one of the things I'd like to see is with the, with Nepal playing here on Willow, uh, 
minor league teams take a closer look at, at these Nepal players and yeah. say, hey, look, these are their potential yeah. overseas. I love to see that happen. I got on KC in minor league cricket. You know, how cool a Rohit ball under Bender Singh Iri. How fun would that be on any given weekend? It would be amazing. I, I would love to see it here in Morseville even. Yeah, like, like we said, bring them on. I think that would be absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it would be, tr- be great. Some, bring them into the South. Get the South. Get so the they're South. They're always coming into minor league. There you go. I mean, coming into Morseville. Morseville, coming yeah. into Church Street Park. Well, Nate, that's all we have slotted out for today. Anything else you want to say before we wrap things up? just want to say, uh, hey, everybody, go, if you're in Texas, go to the games. He's going to be there. And I'll be watching, and we'll, maybe we'll make a couple shows. We'll make a couple shows. Don't worry about that. The shows aren't going to stop. But phenomenal. There you go. There's a show in the book. We don't even have Bobber Buddy today. He is in Texas because he's going to be down there. He's part of the broadcast crew for the whole thing of the USA Nepal series. So this is kind of a makeshift show between you and I. Just like last time. Just like last time. <laughs> so we're making it happen, guys. We're making this happen. Thank you for joining us for Cricket Across America. We're so excited to see this USA Nepal series. Minor league's over. We're headed into international play. So much is going on. USA Nepal, USA Zimbabwe with the women's, and then we have the ODI series to follow that up. So, so much we're going to talk about. Don't go anywhere. Make sure to subscribe, like, and leave a comment down below. It really helps us know that you're enjoying our content. And for myself, for Nate Hayes, and even for Bob or Mike, who's enjoying that Dallas seat at the moment. We thank you for watching. And we can't wait. We'll see you next time. Thank you.